Decarbonization of energy and transport to meet global net zero ambitions will require significantly increased amounts of lithium, one of the raw materials used to manufacture batteries and other green technologies. With Africa playing host to at least a fifth of the world's reserves and a dozen minerals that are critical for the energy transition, coupled with China and the US, who are desperately in need of supplies, how can the continent harness this extraordinary opportunity? Africa, which produces more than 60 metal and mineral products, has a huge potential with respect to mineral reserves, exploration and production. The continent already hosts about 30% of the world's total mineral reserves and even a higher share of deposits of diamonds, vanadium, manganese, platinum, cobalt and gold. But then, one would want to question if Africa has what it takes to scale up the industry, most especially the mining industry and the minerals embedded in it. And so we have Dr. Prosper Chitambara, who is a development economist and a policy advisor. And he will be discussing with us what the, bottle, uh, the bottlenecks are um, for Africa. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Prosper, for joining us. Uh, well, well, thank you so much uh, for having me. All right, thank you. Now, um, Zimbabwe has banned raw lithium uh, exports. This is how we're going to start. And, of course, Namibia is insisting on domestic processing, only to be to uh, preserve economic value. But the question is, um, does Africa have that cultural and infrastructural um, capacity to be able to scale up the value chain of mining these um, mineral deposits that are bound in the continent? Well, I think it's, uh, it's still a major challenge, uh, of course, not just for lithium, but for many other minerals um, within the continent. I think we, we need to definitely enhance our, our capacity to be able to uh, refine, to process these minerals. And, and of course, in particular, the issue of infrastructure is one of the key challenges. We have a huge uh, infrastructure gap uh, in terms of, for example, energy, uh, Zimbabwe uh, being a classical example. We have we currently have a serious uh, energy deficit, and of course, mining requires a lot of uh, a lot of energy. Uh, even the road infrastructure, uh, the transport and logistics infrastructure in most African economies, uh, it's still there's still a lot. It still leaves a lot uh, uh, to be desired. So I think uh, those are some of the things that we need to 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 address uh, infrastructure and also even the regulatory. The environment. I, I think it's it, it, um, for most economies on the continent. I think there are still a lot of challenges. Uh, institutions in general, uh, they, are, they, are, they are still weak, uh, and uh, we need uh, uh, to address issues of transparency, uh, especially around um, the governance of uh, of the extractive sectors uh, on the African continent uh, in general. But uh, we have so much potential. But for us to be able to fully uh, leverage and harness that potential, we need to be investing uh, in, 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 in institutions, strengthening institutions, and also uh, filling the massive infrastructure gap uh, that is currently prevailing in most African economies. Well, before we start talking about um, the probable solutions, um, the challenges and, of course, um, the impediments are things that we cannot wish away in Africa. But then we want to consider the economic implication, looking at the reality on ground. How would it affect the, or how is it affecting the African economy when it is not able to mine these precious minerals? Well, I think, the, 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 obviously, the, the, the opportunity cost uh, is very, very high. Uh, in terms of uh, lost uh, development, uh, loss of uh, growth, loss of employment opportunities, loss, loss of uh, foreign currency. Uh, so as, so we, we need to look at it, I think, from the opportunity cost uh, that uh, African economies are actually facing on account of their failure uh, to fully leverage and harness their, 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 their natural resources. So I think really the onus is on the... On the, the African governments uh, themselves to come up with policies that seek to uh, address the bottlenecks and also to capture a lot of the value, a lot of the rents. It was, of course, for a long time, um, we, we, we have been exporting a lot of our resources um, raw, in raw form, so we've been losing actually value. 
we've been losing we've been losing rents so we need um, some kind of um, industrialization that is actually uh, anchored uh, on, on these resources and of course moving up the value chain in order to maximize uh, the localization of uh, of rentals and of uh, profits all right aside from country like um zimbabwe namibia ghana democratic republic of congo and mali are there other african countries that um, have raw lithium um, exports in commercial quantities enough to push for some sort of maybe regional cooperation well i think uh, the countries that i've mentioned uh, to the best of my understanding and knowledge are where most of our lithium uh, resources, the known <laughs> lithium resources are, but of course I'm sure they could be lithium could be uh, found in other countries, but it's 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 not yet known. Um, uh, a number of countries on the African continent actually are richly endowed uh, in a number of uh, uh, minerals, uh, so it's it's not yet clear whether there are other countries again that may have uh, the lithium resources like uh, the, the ones that we've already mentioned. All right. Now, we are aware that um, China is um, the world's top lithium refiner, but then we have some incursions coming from the West who are open to also mine this mineral um, deposits. You talk about China, talk about the West, talk about Russia, um, talk about, you know, Europe. That is um, Europe, as it were. Now, you now have these um, entities scrambling for Africa's uh, mineral deposits. Why is that so? Would you consider that an exploitation or would you say that is an avenue for economic opportunities for Africa? Well, I think these countries that I've mentioned are seeing the opportunities uh, that are within the lithium uh, value chain, so to speak. Uh, we have seen the massive uh, increase in the price of lithium and the demand obviously for lithium has actually increased quite uh, significantly over the past few years. So a number of countries, um, the, the Chinese, they are looking at, uh, at, at exploiting uh, at these resources uh, as a way obviously of maximizing uh, their own incomes. Uh, so I just see it really as, um, it is, of course, it's a, it's, it's, it's a scramble. Uh, for, for for the lithium resources on, on, on the African continent. And uh, I, I think it's really incumbent uh, on the African governments to be very strategic in terms of the kind of partnerships and investments that they actually enter into, uh, so that at least we don't continue to see um, things like even the illicit financial flows uh, that, that have been very rampant in most African economies. Uh, we've also seen a lot of corruption around um, a lot of the minerals uh, on, on the African continent. And of course, to address some of those concerns, you then need to ensure that um, you strengthen the whole institutional fabric and framework uh, surrounding the governance of these uh, mineral resources. All right. Well, I was going to come to that anyway, because, of course, we want to look at the participation of African countries, African governments, when it comes to signing this kind of bilateral um, agreements and what they are bringing to the table. Because we are aware that most of these host countries just hurriedly sign these deals. And at the end of the day, it favors the investing parties, leaving them to deal with issues of environmental degradation, underemployment, modern sl slavery and the likes. But then what position, if we are going to be critical with um, the role that you think African countries should play? What position do you think African countries should take for them to benefit more from this sort of um, bilateral agreements? Mm. But I think it's, first and foremost, it's important, it's important for African governments to insist that uh, the investors actually stick to the environmental laws and regulations within the countries, and also, of course, the labor laws and regulations again. Well, that, that has also been one of the major uh, issues of concern where you are having a lot of these investors coming in and uh, they are really not abiding by some of the legislation, in particular the labor legislation. And that's been a major challenge, uh, especially in Zimbabwe. Uh, some of these investors, they've really not been abiding by uh, the, the, the labor legislation, for example, uh, in, in Zimbabwe, and of course, that has created challenges, especially uh, with, with the trade unions. And also, of course, the issue of environmental sustainability, I think that's also an area that, uh, that, 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 that we need to insist on uh, in terms of the investors that are coming uh, to invest uh, uh, in our countries.
and, uh, and of course uh, insist on a value addition uh, making sure that at least the processing uh, the value addition actually takes place uh, on the ground and uh, issues of corporate social responsibility again will be very critical especially uh, supporting lo uh, the, the local producers uh, local procurement uh, policies and regulations within within the West countries. Uh, we have seen some uh, big investors doing quite well, especially in terms of uh, favoring uh, the small to medium enterprises terms, in, in terms of their procurement uh, processes. I, I think that, that, that's also critical in terms of uh, ensuring uh, sustainable development uh, within the West economies. Uh, uh, doctor, on the side of this conversation, we still have conversations around um, reducing carbon emission and uh, embracing, uh, embracing renewable energy. So um, do you see the green energy revolution as an opportunity for Africa to actually reshape its future? It's, it's, it, it is. A, it's a massive opportunity for Africa to uh, initiate and sustain uh, green uh, industrialization. I think we have so much potential, of course, not just in lithium uh, production, but also in other sectors of the economy, even in terms of energy, which is critical in terms of uh, supporting uh, mining uh, production, mining processing uh, on, on the African continent. So I, I think there are a lot of opportunities uh, for green industrialization on the African continent that we have not yet fully uh, tapped. All right, thank you so much, Doctor. It's nice to um, end that on a positive note, knowing fully well that um, Africa has the potential, but then if it can scale up its industrialization processes or initiatives, maybe more in terms of revenue accruals can come to the continent. It's nice having you, Doctor. Thanks so much, President.